we have a team of doc of dr muralidhar punit gupta dr pramod bhinde dr rajiv reddy dr ruchit tiwari and me who will be showing small video and discussing the cases so the first case is a 33 year old woman who's referred to me for a retinal detachment vision 6x6 so what would our panelist plan the surgery dr ruchir what would you plan first in such a patient with 66 33 year old female Now the thing is that this patient is not giving any history of laser. So is is this the deep self deem limited and this is a new lesion? You try to find the break here or try to find the break there. Dr. Bender, you any advice to a I resident what where would you suspect? I, I think just with one picture is difficult to comment on. We'll have to check the fundus and uh, when you look at it that upper lesion, when a where was previous buckle? Can we there see? is no buckle. This this is pre-surgery. Pre-surgery, no laser, no, nothing. No, it is shown that uh, no, no. pre-detachment, no, sclerotic no, no, buckle no. done. We will, if we are at this stage, we have done the buckling. This is a photograph pre-buckling. Oh, okay. No, so if, what would you plan in such well, a case? Well, uh, if you can't you can't find a definite break. No, because if you are thinking of, I am not able to clear whether it's like a pigmentation or previous laser done. It's a demarcation. The lady denies in front of her husband there's any history of previous laser or any problem. When husband is not present. Still she denies it. Okay. And there are no other lesion. No other lesion. And if this pigmentation is going around and it's indicating of very old detachment just holding on there. Ah. Or it's a macula on and this is incidental finding on uh, your examination. Uh, depending on how broad that band is, the options are there. Either you can try buckle or even wait and watch. So what about this? bottom this one part of the rd which is now encroaching the fovea this is rd or it is an intra disease that's again i'm huh? not sure the picture is not very clear huh. whether it is intra disease or it is rd so is it could it be retinoschisis do we see a demarcation line in retinoschisis the two things if you look at this picture the top one looks looks like a subclinical rd which actually settled and recurred and resettled. But there is fluid here, the elevation here in this part and That's of what I said, but the demarcation line has actually cut it off. So I wouldn't be very much worried about it. What I'm worried about is inferior temporal quadrant yeah. uh, thing. No, actually but now I realize that's when it is going on and easily along that vessel up, see yeah. the color is changed. So this obviously, this patient need management, yes. sorry. I, I initially thought that only that upper portion. I didn't realize that this is going on this side. Yeah. Can exactly. you put the light off? Probably light contrast off will have better. Thing. No, it looks more like a retinoschisis on this side. The lens size is definitely RD. Inferiorly, yeah. yeah. This is a... No, this is not RD. This was just this, this point. No, because this side... No, this no, side RD is there, huh? There is, there RD is, is up RD. to that level. Yeah. RD is up to that level. Yes. That's what I missed initially. So the RD. break... Break would be somewhere here then, if it is a much more elevated or you would take no. this as... Probably break is, I would say, superior temporally okay. and probably some gap which is fluid is leaking through and now going up. Okay. So, I did a skill buckling, the patient was under GA and uh, there was a complete drainage and the retina settled. Where was the break in trough? There is no definite break, few suspected breaks and I did cryo two, three areas and I did a broad buckle of 180 degrees. Should I have done a vitrectomy on table or a left hand is a buckle? Six, six patient. No, no, I agree with buckle, but uh, now because the, because we have both the options available yeah. on the table, uh -huh. so I would depress. But I, if I'm sure about break, then I would do buckle. Okay. If, I mean, of course, break has to be available. Yeah. But if you are not sure, previously we used to do end to end buckle. What something called as even if not sure, do entire thing ensure there is no peripheral break. Yeah. But now. If you are not sure, break probably I will go inside rather than empirically treating that one. Okay. But if you are sure about break, that you have to see so, on the table. So, so it drained, the retina settled, but after a few days the fluid came back in the same location. Okay, so now I will 
show the video where I first indent. You can ask me to stop the surgery any place. So I am indenting and trying to look for a break. This is suspect. Injecting tricot. PVD was difficult. And the RD again was at the same point. It did not progress to the posterior pole. The same configuration came back. Trimmed the, the area next to the, to the peripheral lesions. Did the trimming up to the aura. Couldn't do a PVD up to the aura. So, in a patient whose majority of the retina is settled, would you do a retinotomy in the, in the detached retina only to use a PFCL? Still, so after PVD, we could suspect a break here. Was it PVD induced or it is uh, a previous one? We suspected some breaks, clearing the vitreous in the periphery. So you didn't want to, there was this break here. This break. was iatrogenic or this was pre-existing or you created retinotomy? No, no, I didn't create a retinotomy. Either it was iatrogenic or it was pre-existing which I was not seeing. I, I did a PFCL up till that area, drained it completely. This is a PFCL injection. Could it be retinoschisis with a twin two breaks in and outer both? Laser that area created extensive laser along the whole retinal detachment because could, there was no definite other break. Put oil now the, the patient after three months got a cataract surgery done and a oil removal and patient has six six vision. So, first thing you say that if there is doubt in the break, I should have done a vitrectomy on day one and not put a buckle. Again, intraoperatively, I take a call. That's what I said. And then whether you want to just only vitrectomy and of course, a vitrectomy with combined, combined buckle or only buckle, that probably intraoperatively. But if it's, I am not, see, now the cyst is there, but I am not sure whether it's like a congenital or uh, X-linked retinoschisis or it's just chronic detachment. That's why the schisis was there. Huh. And because if you are dealing with a like a X link, but this is a lady, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's no question of being The other eye retina is fine. Yeah, I didn't so, show yeah. that. Uh, so, so probably this is like a intra retinal cyst indicating chronic. long standing chronic detachment. And that's the reason probably it was not. Uh, so why did it, it extend more posteriorly when it re detached? It just came in, it was static. Patient didn't get the surgery done for almost two months after the buckle, waited. But the patient was 6-6, six, six, difficult to convince. I said, do you have a second opinion? Come back. Mm -hmm. So, they agreed with the 6-6 six, six vision. So, why wouldn't, uh, there was no PVD or the retina would not detach? On table, PVD was not there. Was not there. Because that's one more reason why probably there is no PVR, nothing. So, that's why some poster hyaluron is holding on. So, somewhere, some tiny break which is holding on, probably not easy to get and intermittently fluid is seeping through. But during primary surgery, obviously, you are not sure, so you could not seal that break. It still remain open probably. So, again, going back fluid again, slowly and sipping and just... So, if it. you don't find the break on the table, how would you suggest looking for a break? During air fluid exchange, you'd look for the break or you uh, do a trepanual well, and see where it goes back and find the break? A couple of ways. Fluid air exchange probably will not able to help you. Probably you use some uh, active suction going on one two three four whatever suspected areas and you see egress and sudden you see probably that is the one way 
Now, other way is trying to put PFCL on the posterior pole. And then when it starts to start filling, you see from where you get a shell and egress. The third way up, you can just inject now uh, like a BBG or other dyes in a subretinal space. Yeah. And then see from where that uh, uh, stain fluid come out. That way. No, break was not sure about. No. And it go to no, no, PBG. probably that area, that retina was already detached. So, when fluid started collecting, yes. No, settle down, but it will not immediately will fly, uh, get fixed. P if posterior halo would have separated, would have extended much rapidly because there is not, not that much of uh, PVD is not there. So, enough fluid is also not there. Free flow is not there. So, whatever fluid slowly accumulating probably obviously going to accumulate. It took two to three weeks again for two fluid to accumulate. So, and again it is a rivalry between. I agree that one. So, probably that is area now still RP pump is not a, that actively functioning or something. No, it is difficult to answer that question exactly. But more or less generally when you see this, generally the area which was detached again fluid come there back. Even it was drain flat or it was some amount of because knowing this SRF would have been very very thick and viscous. Yeah. Some SRF would have left behind. The blue dye would have actually made your life a little better. The blue dye can actually even point out if you have any break or if you are seeing a break whether it is within the layers of the retina or whether it is a So, I think if we are suspecting preoperatively a skysis also along with the retinal detachment, putting a dye will actually see if we have a communication which is actually getting through and through. And plus, sometimes trypan blue alone in diluted concentration also <coughs> stains the edges of the break. And uh, that probably would also help you to find out. Second thing actually in these cases, I mean, this is just for uh, playing a devil's advocate, not doing any of these things and just do a barrage laser and then just leave it. Uh, but that was the involving the four. Only, only reason is laser would have been far posterior within uh, the arcade. Sir, my uh, question is the same story because so, the visual field will, as such, when it's recurring, it again comes back to the same thing. Sir, could you have done a barrage laser on table after buckling? That's why I feel I yes. should have done a barrage laser immediately yes. after, after buckling. buckling. Over the buckle. Over the buckle. Over as well as the whole the yes. Yeah, if you don't find the break. Yes. As I somehow feel that there is a skysis which actually has a communication. You have a pointer. Yeah, you have a pointer. Skysis would not drain on buckling. Yeah, skysis. No, intra-retinal cyst will not obviously drain on the sky cyst one. And so, uh, maybe the, the but w w this, now this area, when it, now here, this area, was it flat when you did a buckle? Post buckling. I, I felt, but there is always a doubt of a, of a cyst. See, what happened, SRF will get drained out, up ah. to here. But ah. if it is intra-retinal cyst yeah. or this is intra sky cyst fluid, ah. it will not drain while uh, we are doing SRF and it remain persistent as it is, then that is one way of difficulty. Now, another issue is, suppose break we are somewhere here or next to here or, so you drain this, but what happened, this cyst being a round oval elevated mechanically, what, it will not allow break to flatten down, even though buckle is there. That okay. And mechanically, it is holding brake open, so slowly fluid are stepping again, you go back to the same thing. Okay. So, the cyst didn't flatten out. Yeah. So, what we do is, when you look inside and suppose cyst is still elevated and look like that and you as presume or suspect brake somewhere here, so drain the cyst also, you can externally like drainage, but then sometimes you poke through the needle externally in the sclera okay. and then this fluid comes out, this get flattened. But if it is away from the brake and you are sure brake somewhere here, you are done buckle, within a week, this cyst will flatten on its own. You really do not have to drain because it is because of chronic detachment. The moment retina attaches, this also collapses on its own. 
but may, if mechanically it is holding brake up, then it will not allow brake to flatten, allow not allow retina to settle. Was there any ultrasound done pre-operatively? I think maybe, I am not sure. So, ultrasound sometimes can pick up this crisis. Sorry? OCT. Yeah, reachable and OCT. A doctor can get an OCT. OCT also around the RK. That's what he is saying. Because this can be the way it looks laser, it can be demarcated line, but he said there is no history of laser. He's very sure about it. So I, that's why I said there was a subclinical RD. Yeah. And huh? the demarcation line. Yeah. No, I think uh, one other thing is you could actually done a OCT nasally and that could actually told you there is a detachment. So then you can actually understand that there is a neurosensory uh, separation. So, no, minus one or minus two. So what would be now if I flattened from the internal, if it is a retina, would it show up now? No, what happened to the cyst when you did the internal drainage? What happened to this cystic it, lesion? It settled. It settled. Yeah. Okay. So if it was a retina size, it would show up now in the collapsed retina. Or would it not? It, 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 you know, it May, just flattened down. Yeah. It just flattened down. And after some time, you won't uh, no. know that there is a cyst. Okay. It's chronic degenerative changes, but it just flattened down. And once the retina flattened down. The cyst is normally in which layers of the retina? It is just above the RP is intraretinal when you have a chronic cyst. It is Huh? So, if you said you punctured from outside, I will be punctured certain layers of the retina if I were to drain from outside. Okay. So, you feel if there is cyst and if you are buckling, you must put a needle just at the place of cyst to drain it. No, if, if break, see, as a routine you do not want to do, but because it is like a, like a balloon like thing, cavity. Huh. So, even if you puncture it, it is a partial thickness break. Inner layers you are not going to touch at all. Yeah, yeah. But fluid will drain out, so it flattens out. But if break obviously are sure somewhere else, you don't want to do that because obviously needle has to go a little bit deep in. But it's not nothing nothing will happen with that because it's not going to get full thickness all. Suppose it was retinoschisis. Suppose it was retinoschisis, there was an outer and an inner break. That would come back again. Even if I have lasered the outer layers. Yeah, it's a diatogenic. See. You talking about? Yes. So we created a, so while doing a PVD, there was a break there. What is the atogenic or not? I don't know. Yeah. Cyst can happen. Yes. Okay. So it's a very faint band that is actually looking there. Thank ah. you. So, Dr. Ruchir, your turn is next, please. Finish yours. So very uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, so, I'll, so I'll be presenting a case of a retinal, a recurrent retinal detachment in a uh, in a pediatric uh, patient. And uh, so th uh, this is the case uh, detail. Uh, the patient is a 13 year old male, history of myopia in both eyes, bilateral retinal detachment. Right eye was operated elsewhere, presented with silicone oil filled eye with a retinal re-detachment uh, and he underwent a re-surgery followed by SOR after three months. The retina was attached till the last follow-up. Now the left eye underwent a buckling surgery elsewhere and uh, the buckling failed. So 
this is the case that we be discussing today. So this is a short surgical video of the left eye. So I'm trying to induce PVD after injecting tricot. For the PVD induction is taking place. So pediatric PVDs are actually tricky. Vitroschisis can also happen sometimes. It does take some time to do PVD. So I try to extend the PVD to whatever level I can. Then after injecting BBG also I again try to peel the vitreous to whatever extent I can. After this ILM peeling is done. The retina is flattened with PFO and peripheral vitrectomy is done. So this is probably the break area with lot of hyaluronic still attached. This is the fibrotic anterior hyaloid also visible. Was pars plana detached also? Sir? Pars plana also was detached? Yes sir. So then some anterior vitrectomy is done under air as well. And after making a small retinotomy, air fluid exchange is completed. At the end of the surgery, the anterior retina seems taut. So, uh, cautery is done to release traction. This is followed by 360 barrage laser. And at the end of the surgery, silicone oil is injected. So 360 laser is visible in this last image. At the end of it, a silicone oil is injected. So the patient was all right for some time. The retina remains uh, remains attached under oil. The patient undergoes an uneventful FACO plus PCR plus SOR after four months with air tamponade. Retina is still attached, BCB improved to uh, 6 by 60, but then the patient develops a re-detachment after 3 months. And during this surgery, cataract has already been done, there is a lot of uh, anterior haze. So, posterior capsule is first cut to clear the media as much as possible, AC wash is given. And when I go inside, I see that there is a thick sheet of hyaloid that is still attached. So, this is still attached, just adjacent to the area of ILM peeling. So, it becomes difficult initially to peel the membranes. So initially I was using island peeling forceps, then I stained the area with PPG dye, changed my forceps to end grasping forceps and this is when I am able to start peeling the membrane. And as is visible, one there is one attachment right up to the disc. Now when I peel the PVD, I can peel it much anterior level to what I could in the previous surgery. Yeah. 
सब प्रीवियस सर्जरी सर ओनली नियर द ब्रेक नियर द ब्रेक नियर द रिलैक्स इट नॉट मी यस सर यस सर द मेम्ब्रेन्स आर सो डेंस एंड so buckling had already been done this is a failed buckle yeah fourth surgery sir will just depress see all around check everything there is no obviously untreated break or something doubtful areas if it is there you do laser and refer, like a reschedule as well uh, like suspected like a untreated break or new break or if there is hypotony because so many times you cannot check iop also this is 13 year old sir so the so pressure was not he was okay for 3 months then he developed a redetachment i did not put any gas after sor it was plain sor with air tamponade and the child was secondary to pvr actually contraction and all those in contraction of posterior hyoid which was we probably could not remove during the first surgery that's what is removing now is and it become much more sticky now yeah which uh, and the things become much more difficult now than the first surgery operation is very severe in most of the children yeah very very different so but my point was that should we be trying to peel the vitreous in the first surgery itself to whatever extent i can not whatever i can mean whatever extent so till equator i did no you can peel up to the ora that's a base thing but sometime while peeling itself is retina start tearing probably yeah. beyond certain age you just cannot separate it's not that possible one. yes yeah. but then generally that happen in elderly age group high myo kids once you get a cleavage plane unless there are lattices and all those things holding right. you know so once you get cleavage at the disc and then you start peeling probably it will come because what we called as a posterior migration of a vitreous base that happen with the age, age. Right, okay. right not at this age so the issue is uh, separ- initial separation itself and probably if that does not happen and sometime and kys kysis also is not that frequent in mm. at this age again issue is right. most of the time what happen we just not able to separate and spend lot of time lot of time but unless you say once you are in unless you separate the vitreous is bound to come to fail and lens becomes a challenge so lensectomy i mean lens removal because i don't usually do lens removal in a kid we also do i agree with you totally i avoid as far as possible and now because of wide angle system and yeah. now reasonably good illumination generally we do not need to previously almost all, all the cases, cases. Is, so again i am doing a retinectomy to all the areas of traction primary caps not be when you doing the cataract sir a 13 year old kid i would wait i mean the so lens may not settle up but how can to do it up so chill like an opening two ways of looking at it uh, see if you are removing the oil along with the cataract mm-hmm. surgery then i will remove i will do the primary capsulotomy because generally capsule itself already thicken by the time you take for a cataract surgery definitely we would do but if you want to retain the oil only cataract say, suppose this patient would have iop of 8 or 9 and cataract is significant then i would have retained the oil and only cataract and i put the lens because that is vision now compromise vision is gone talk when you going to put an oil on table there at that time maybe good option to not disturb the capsule because you have a risk of coming in forwards but if it's already sort of picking and it's been there mm. in there and then you see an rd in that patient unlikely for the lens to move much at the time of 
when you're doing sor is better to do it yes yes i agree it doesn't matter any for any sor yes yes yeah yeah because most of these eyes see specification yeah always will have some specification also i'll add to that not only capsule opacification these eyes during primary vitrectomy whatever surgeon you cannot remove enter highlight as long as your ca- capsule is intact yeah so no this highlight is sequestrated got compressed because mm-hmm. of oil stuck that also be make thick shift it is not a capsular sometimes you can peel it off this is stuck one single fiber sheet yeah. it's anterior vitreous and anterior highlight together yeah. so you uh, i always always do a respect of base if you are doing doing as well no risk involved because if you look at most of the pediatric cataracts they do they make a primary posterior capsular mm-hmm. and do an anterior vitreous let's see ramen no that's yeah. as it one but there's no vitreous that's okay but if you look at the any risk then what happened focusing becomes difficult exactly reason i am not in a favor of putting iol during rd surgery because lot of people when you are planning underlying rd and cataract they say oh, we'll do fake put iol and then you take care do simultaneously same sitting do rd so now one thing dbr of other eye and then not only other dynamics you add on buckle and everything so so it's very very unpredictable and then iol and other thing so i would prefer leave iol for a second sitting No, but then what happens to the capsule capsule you do, you do a cataract or you don't do the cataract what i do sometimes so the lens is clear so the lens is clear, you don't touch the lens yeah yes but if lens is not clear and and i am we don't have a choice but to remove the lens while doing rd surgery or any vitrectomy diabetics are different when settled down but these eyes what i do is i'll try to retain entry capsule while doing lens vitrectomy polish the capsule nicely we have incidences in spite of that capsule become fibrotic but quite some time it stays nicely like that so of course lens will not in the bag but second time when sor or something when i plan after 3 months 6 months will now have proper calculation have a lens in a sulcus and again enter a capsule you cut the central opening large opening just short of optic in this case also you can see the capsule is already started shrinking yes you see yeah, it was shrinking it was yeah. shrinking the capsule is getting phimosis yeah. so you go to over a period of time it is going to shrink further Well, I, 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 
I agree. I do not have answer why this happened, but there are few cases we heard with this reaction to. But they, we can't use the word reaction to oil. There's something like a what you are doing, like a, a task, task-like thing. Probably, st see, which case it will happen, which way it will not happen. I think case to case we need to treat generally with steroids, as I mean. So like a, treating like a task. No, no, not not really. Uh, only have a reaction. So you first post-operative, you see, depending on the re reaction, you uh, decide about treatment. Most of the cases they do not need systemic steroids. Topical probably more frequently I would use. Maybe instead of one week, one hourly, I use two weeks and then taper down. But there are people, they continue even half hourly or something. I feel may not be necessary, but each one has their protocol depending on case to case. And anyway, kids, uh, again, Sriram can answer that. Because in generally, they have a more inflammatory reaction, more fibrosis as compared to adults. Cataract if this lens can be maintained as long as possible. I, that's what so we because do. Because the presence of the lens itself is help with the growth of the eyes. Yes. So we remove the lens, that factor goes. Suppose minimally you can still leave it. Not see the question is not we not manage it. No, uh, so, Amit, uh, Amit, I'll put it other way around. As long as, irrespective of whatever pathology, if I can manage posterior segment without removing cataract, I mean, dense enough, but com somehow I can manage, I will avoid cataract surgery. And that, that is my principle again. But now, everybody talk about macular hole, ERM, all those things. Anyway, down the line, two months, three months, cataract hona hai, abhi nikal lo. Lot of people are doing. Logistic reasons. No, that's what I'm saying. Concepts are changing. People, they do everything. But give an option if I can handle, because the inflammation is significantly less if you don't touch anterior chamber segment. So you don't come in anterior chamber, it's absolutely clear most of the time. And then, then you have proper calculation, everything, FECO, lateral sitting, so many times intra-op, unpredictable. VR is always unpredictable for you, certain steps. And then you'll end up in halfway through something, you are neither here nor there. So that is, I would say it's a personal choice. But now because of logistic reason, because of whatever, people combine, because looking at combined surgery, then hospitalization is less, your leave and other issues suitable for family, all those things people talk about, cut down. There are certain advantages are there. But still give an option as far as when I am doing, because even if everything goes on table, I do not know when he comes back with recurrence. And there are situations, at least a couple of times, you put IOL at the same sitting. And then second time, when with such a bad PR, I have to remove IOL. So you pay, charge for IOL, and then second time, charge for IOL removal. Then it's become very embarrassing situation also for them. So once retina is settled, then I'm comfortable. But that is again, as I, I always say. I think the say, view, with the, even with a cataracted lens, will be much better than with the IOL, with the, P, the peripheral uh, PCO. Yeah. Hmm? See, what usually it is like, the first instance when you have a retinal detachment, need to manage the lens is only if it is hampering your vision, uh, view. It's not visual rehabilitation. Only if it's hampering your view, touch the lens, remove it, and don't put the lens, I will, at that time. The next time, if you look at it, when you are planning for SOR, then again, if it is causing a problem with your visual rehabilitation, then remove the lens. If that is not the case, no point touching the lens again. It might, it might not. It might, it might not. If you are not able to get the max best corrected vision without removing the lens, that means there is still a potential, then you remove it. That means cataract is significant. significant. Yeah. yeah. Now, what I would do here is, the problem what is happening with all of us now is, if I won't do, he will go somewhere else, somewhere say, Karwalo, Karwalo, or Pile Kya. So, what I do is, now this scenario, I will tell them that you definitely need cataract surgery, but I would prefer to do in a step. Definitely down the line, three months, six months, you will definitely need. Option is there to remove now, but probably power calculations and other things. 
I may not be do well able to do that accurately now, but probably once things settle down, three months, six months, I'll be do it. So, but if you prime that to start with only, then when even if you goes to somebody, then you know you already explained that part. If it's only cataract surgery now, you have done SOR and when you are removing the cataract and if you feel capsule is not that big enough, not fibrotic, reasonably clear or just few stria, you leave it. But if, exactly, so then definitely, that's exactly a silicon bubble, fibrotic thing, yes we do. Then depending on your comfort. See, invariably, because invariably you will end up doing cataract capsule. Oil Yeah, so uh, I will add another dimension to this anterior or posterior. What happened? If on table you do, now with this vitrectomy is I, you can nice large, almost 4 millimeter, 5 millimeter diameter, you can cut that capsule, lens is nicely stable now, uh, not going beyond optic, it's perfectly okay, settle down well. Now, there are situation, we decided we put the lens, there are at least two patients still, I remember still following them. So, then it's become opaque, uh, fibrotic, did a, a capsulotomy, vision improved to 6 9. 6 months back, 4 months, 4 between 4 and 6 months, come back, again no cover again. And then seven or eight times it happened last or four or five years. It's okay. Yeah, so and you see it is hanging. Yeah, and again comes back hanging. So ultimately after that, between Dr. PP and I am following that patient. So there are two patients are like this. Ultimately now this last time when he came, he says enough is enough. He says I just cannot keep on coming every three three months to do this. So we last visit I did large opening, but I use then I am comfortable doing pass pana. I didn't want to touch under segment everything. Just two sclerotomy I mean, done with this. If you can to make a so what happened here? Uh, radiating fold everywhere. Uh, sorry, uh, not scleral buckling. RD and then had a silicon oil inside. And this is after silicon oil removal. I did on the table first silicon oil removal. And after silicon removal, this was a picture on the table. Okay. Primary surgery was encircling band, silicon oil injection, peripheral laser, everything, uh, uh, middle aged person. And then this what I was showing is membrane removal is basically uh, I removed oil. This was the picture. Now so many times it's easier to miss uh, like uh, membranes in this type of scenario. A lot of premature membranes will be there and sometimes under silicon oil you miss those things. So uh, you have to re see, tap the retina all around, check the mobility and ultimately because furnace wall was not open, so went back and this is just edited video, but it took time for me to realize and see this one direction only it was extending peripherally, what you are talking about again, same thing. So and then keep on stretching, ultimately came out. Now the, you can see subretinal bands are here, there were multiple subretinal bands showing around and that puckering now mainly you see here is because more subretinal fibrosis than preretinal membrane. Preretinal membrane were not much. Now, he has a subretinal silicon oil also. Now, you don't want to just remove silicon oil and subretinal space, just go in and take that out. The reason being, again, once you cut the retina for that, you have chances retina is mobile, then if you have preretinal fibrosis, those membranes removal become difficult because no counteraction. And in fact, underlying oil, keep the retina stretched. It's easier that way to peel the membrane, ensure that all the membranes are removed. And then you have to then go for a subretinal oil removal. Now, when you make a subretinal oil removal, generally you try with a small, tiny retinotomy. But sometimes because of its surface tension, it doesn't come out that way. And because of the way we see it, on 12 o'clock area, a little bit, we tilt the globe down. So it makes sense to make a superior retinotomy here rather than inferior retinotomy. Most of the time through inferior, it doesn't come at all. Okay. So we did. There was a break here. Okay. So we enlarged that break. Initially tried, tried to nudge a little bit. It's like a delivering the baby. It stretched itself, but still needed a much larger break that way. But it squeezed itself out and then it's just flow freely through that. As you see, 
the reflex actually is coming up and then I am using still active suction here. Okay. So <laughs> that's why partly it's coming out. And then whole thing is stretch. So but it doesn't stop there. Then you look at it still retina is stiff. Still uh, we are like but no membranes on the surface of the retina. Probably you know you need to now extend the retinotomy. But it was not only with the retinotomy, it's not intrinsic contraction which will work out only retinotomy. What we had a few subretinal wad, but I did not anticipate how extensive those membranes were. So now uh, so I extended retinotomy, I did a quarterly around, but extended retinotomy a little bit and then I realized they are quite a significant number membrane and there was obviously napkin ring was there. Try to peel this off here. See the long strands are coming out and now here while trying by manual, we realize it's not that enough. So I had to do another retinotomy inferiorly because other end was extending there. And when I pull those up and then see now then once I cut that end, and then you pull this off, this is what is coming out, it's like a hammock like thing holding entire entire thing. So multiple membranes, multiple uh, retinotomy sometimes particularly when you deal with a silica uh, subretinal bands, sometimes one or two bands are not uh, always necessary to remove all the bands, obviously we break them, traction is relieved, but sometimes there is an entire large sheets around this entire even acidic double retina, retina and then have one more entire membrane like this, so unless you remove that retina will not settle down. So eventually inferior part we disconnected another retinotomy and through superior part the napkin ring we pulled out and then this is what settled down. Yeah, but uh, recently we are looking at that uh, Naresh Babu was what he was trying to do. He says uh, retinotomy we need not do transcleral you go through a subretinal space with a because of our uh, new cannula system wall cannulas are there. So you have illumination from inside. Previously what we used to make small retinotomy and go through and subretinal membrane removed. He said no, no, we will go straight posteriorly sclerotomy. Go through straight in a subretinal space with that forcep. So you have a speed. reach also is much better and pull that out. But that can happen if you have one or two small bands. But if you have extensive uh, subretinal band, you won't, you, that easy to miss those and unless you remove those, retina will not settle. Yes, there is a high, very high risk of bleeding. Not only that, what his justification was when you, because I, I ask because when a positive pressure inside, the chances are there the moment you have that sclerotomy, it will start leaking through retina, go, becomes flattened. So he says, no, no, because it's self-sealing, we have a wall cannula, it will not leak. But the moment you enter, you know, along that, it always leaks to some extent. problem is that we need illumination inside. That means you are putting infusion cannula inside. So leave what he again said little bit keep hypotonus eye hypotonus but the hypotonus eye is a risk more risk of bleeding what you are talking about. So I am putting trocar projecting a vitreous cavity in through that I mean in a subretinal space and then putting the forcep through that. I, I don't know I mean we will have to try it that is it. That is what, uh, yes, definitely there is a very high risk. Very high risk. And, and, and particular procedure. Initial procedure bind and the more posterior go, the more vascular choroid is, the more chances of bleeding. Right, yeah. hmm? Endoscopy man is sitting next to you. Answer, he can answer the question. another port right but then the endoscope through one yeah because endoscope through one port but we need a, another port we need a forcep
that you can do. No, because that's why, because particularly when you ex anticipate extensive one, unless you have large retina tomy, reflect all the retina, then only you will get those membranes out. Yes, yeah. No, they, there he claims there is no need to do retina tomy at all. That's all. That, that's the thing. So that would be through a port, sir. Yeah. Uh, a 23 gauge port you make in the subretinal space and then do it. Huh? Trans conjunctiva, trans clara. Huh? As far posterior as you can, so and quadrant so which is available to. Cases where there is an anti PVR and mm -hmm. so Usually, when you try to go through a sclera pass plan, you might go through the retina. So, you go behind it, you are all subretinal anyway. So it's a separate null, so go there and then remove it. If retina is stiff, then you can go. But when retina is stiff and thrown into fold, you can't see the under in a subretinal space. So that's the only thing. This yes, then I would not have done retina tummy. Yeah, if not buckle. Definitely yes, definitely yes. If I would not have done, I mean, just only two row opening here and there, and I would have managed not doing RR, then yes. But probably I think with uh, LPFC around all those things, we are more and more uh, RR side. And what his case I was talking about, the amount of membrane, obviously you try to peel it up as much as possible, but we are more liberal doing RR, much more extensive than what previously we used to do. So, and there are cases where we have like a posterior hyaloid, you certain age beyond that you cannot separate and you know it's still far posterior and you just cannot support it with the buckle and you invariably you have that gut feeling that this fellow is going to come back again with the recurrence because I am sure I have not released the traction properly. Quite some time it's happening like people say okay then primary 360 degree during first vitrectomy. No, we don't take call most of the time. That's why. I mean, that's. I'm just for a sake of discussion. I'm talking about given option. I won't do as primary thing. All of us, I think, little bit conservative. So I did a 360 barrage laser in both the eyes. One eye is doing fine, but the other eye, which which had less myopia, she developed she she developed a retinal detachment. First, I tried a pneumatic. I put in gas and I did more laser. It stayed for some time. Then again, she had a recurrence because there was a contraction at a particular point. Now, while during PVD induction, the PVD will not go beyond the arcades. It's happened with me also. And a break would form whenever I try to peel it. Yes. So, I shaved it to whatever level I could, yeah. did laser and put oil. I still haven't done SOR in that case. No, no, that's exactly particularly why these eyes we try to do buckle as far as possible because these are the practical difficulties. Sometimes just beyond orchid you just cannot and then you start when you create a posterior break then you are left with nothing. We have one case now break was next to the disc nasal side fortunately but underlying uh, uh, there is no RP or why, why only sclera. You can't do laser also. But, okay, so you create something like a, Hydrogenic, then you have lost the case. So even oil also will not hold that case. We know now that, unfortunately. So even if broad buckle, nowadays I think nobody knows more than 276, if at all. Most of the time 240 also they know. You ask them, they know most of the people will not know. But we still sometimes, I still once in a while use that 280, 281. Because I would struggle because those buckle takes time, patience you need. But intraoperative problems are much many more than having that try to handle outside. Yeah. The only problem that we face is with especially I, I think 281 now what did they stop manufacturing also because nobody is using I think. I think 279 is max that you are getting. No, you get 280. Toshbro, no, no, that, that, this, this one that uh, only one come. Huh? Laptician. Laptician has 281 also and 280 also. We keep always two or three in a stock. Probably those cases, if you are wanting to go a little more posterior, that segment, you can give a segment to the one. Then you add on there, yeah, add on something like a like a meridional segment like this so overlapping. So that's all.
ideally we should be removing but uh, we delay as long as there is no emulsification as long as there is no glaucoma of fakic eyes you do not have uh, keratopathy uh, iop is not very low uh, probably or uh, not i mean no glaucoma basically But don't want to wait because once you wait till five, so just or something you feel now you must be start. I think probably take out because otherwise those then they have more problem those droplets uh, create more. Yes. When you're doing re-surgery multiple times, the disc becomes pale over a period of time. The vision doesn't come back to the original. Any precautions you use lesser pressure when doing res uh, surgery or you. Generally, anyway, with your uh, uh, MIVS now, you do around 25 or so. Not 20, but around 25 you come. But speller is not because of your say. Speller is because of retina is uh, uh, becoming more and more unhealthy. And that also directly compromising uh, disc health. Yeah. Sometimes uh, things happen. What vision the patient had, That is uh, another problem that we don't have exact answer, but what you said is absolutely there are reports, there are cases, post SOR vision has dropped, there are few cases, lot of hypothesis is there about, we are still not sure why it's happening, but yes, 100% there are few cases are like that, post SOR. Sir, so when you do SOR, you do air fluid exchange, at what pressure are you doing the air fluid uh, That's 25, between 25 and 30, never go above that. We, so it is nothing to do with uh, FG, it is something to do with, I don't know, some other reaction, inflammatory component, you are talking about some. Yeah, but. Uh, so majority of the uh, AF route should be at 25 only. Most of the 25, but if I like uh, axial length, you are uh, doubtful, then uh, 23 is better because you extra 5 millimeter segment you have. No, no. The pressure, air fluid pressure I'm asking. Around 25. 25. Around 25. Unless you need interop something oozing, bleeding, then you rise it and bring it back. Anything for glucometer special? Glucometer special also same thing. That is short period of time, probably it will hold on. The other thing is that those patients who had oil removal, Sometimes the pressure fluctuates for years, you know, it becomes normal, then it goes up, then how do you give them an anti glucose medication? So, the thing is, many times, the angles are not some amount of oil. Yeah. You don't have to remove the fluid, the oil. So, this will be very high. You have to wait and watch. You just cannot uh, say stop the medication. The pressure can't stop. The pressure is going to fluctuate for at least one year. Once it settles, then it takes a take and then it settles. Now if this yes. Now if this patient actually develops cataract and you intend to do a cataract surgery. Yeah, cataract, yeah. will you like to meddle with the angle no. during the cataract surgery? Yeah, that's what I was asking. Uh, what I do is uh, I do two things here. I, I initially try to suck out everything actively near go angle and use active suction and then take a syringe and saline flush the angle forcefully all around 360 degree so so something will come out but which is already trapped in a trabecular but mesh work but the problem with that one is the moment you flush then you again having a fresh point from where you'll have these bubbles again coming into the anterior agree one other place. Uh, no what happened we will minimize that that is going to help. See, one yeah. year, which one already is large enough, trabecular mesh work and macrophages around all those things, that will, we can't do anything. So, that has to slowly flush out on its own with a regular flow, and that's why prolonged. Rab definitely going to fail with this, the oil amount going to be there. Yes. So, you know, the oil is going to be there. Shut, but shut, 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 sh
maximum glaucoma medication. So partial endo CPC, maybe 180 degrees is what our glaucoma specialist suggests. So I go ahead and then do 180 degrees and leave it. Yeah. Not much. Not much. It's going to be there. It's not much. No, it's, it's what what we have seen is. Yeah. Yeah. So where the, the target which you do is, it's not like uh, it's just like a photocoagulation to just to contract there. That's it. So don't see much of inflammation post-operative. So that I have done at least uh, five six cases like that where pressures are not getting controlled. Maximum medication, you do something. Like that. So the good thing actually with the endoscope is you can actually see the yes. It's yeah. What's the end point? Is it grey or white? Only contract. See, uh, silicon no oil white. touching the cornea. No uh, yeah, one minute, let him finish. Okay, yeah, the silicon what oil the bubble being in a cornea, contact with the cornea for a prolonged period, basically it hampers the nutrition of the cornea. And then this keratopathy, all those things come. Yeah, that's why. So, correct. So, I'll come to that. That's why. So, when you have multiple bubble, those are not going to, and they are free floating bubble, they are not going to cause keratopathy at all. They are going to cause mechanical or hindrance, probably block the pupillary area. There are too many, then vision get compromised. Or when you're sitting, everything goes up, vision is clear. I'll ask patient. If patient feels he still can manage while sleeping, I say take two extra pillows, everything goes up. Pressure, if throughout normal, then proactively I will not go remove those. But even if you go and remove, still you will have always something is left because once emulsification happens, so it will not go out totally. So that problem is going to be passed. That's the reason just before you feel emulsification about to start, that's the best time to get those things out. So what is your normal? One and a half months, two months, three months you doing oil? Uh, definitely not before three months. Definitely not before three months. Unless IOP suddenly goes high and you are not able to control. So, I have uh, variability. So I look at the retina, I see for if there is any PVR changes which are happening. If I don't see PVR changes in one and a half month or two months, then I would prefer to remove it earlier than later. If I start seeing some membranes also, then I'll keep it for a longer time. Sometimes patients say, I'm going out, you should do definitely. No, not not necessarily. Necessarily. no that's not the reason. I, I, if there is no symptom at all, even there are situations, one like uh, even six, eight months, nine months, one year. But yes, uh, with the current evidence and new and new things are coming uh, coming up now, with uh, your uh, electrodiagnostics and other things, and probably longer duration of silicon probably is detrimental to the health of retina. So you take this out as early as possible, but not at one and month, uh, unless like a uh, already emulsification or other changes. What happens psychologically, emotional factors, psychology and your financial issues also. So you finish surgery, you come back for checkup after uh, six weeks or eight weeks and you tell Nabin, no, I'll nikal nahi. So you want to prime him also. So uh -huh. the logistic convenience, so it's a combination of everything. Yeah. We, I definitely won't advise immediately when they come back after two months or one and a half month because that's the time when he actually might go back and start working again. Yeah, priming. So put him priming back again for the next exactly. two months. And say, next yeah. one more month, he's not going to go for work. So give him a time where he can feel that, okay, I'm okay now. I'm going back to work and feel normal. Then give him the time after two, three months, then you can remove. It's more like that, actually. That's why it becomes three months, four months. But he's absolutely fine. And then logistically, they said, no, we have time needed. And then you delay. Yeah, the thing is, post-oil removal CME, how do you handle that? It comes in low. Actually, NSID is uh, again, it's a little bit not everybody gets, but if they are there, we know that uh, it's going to come back. So, it is recommended that even it goes off, continue at least two to three months of your NSID. But only risk is with uh, this one, current one. Probably Ketrolac and all those things, they are reasonably safe. Huh? But uh, right, left and center, what we are giving now is become like a placebo. No, sometimes you see a small membrane which you may not have removed at SOR time. And you, should you go in and remove the... Or you Just leave it that way. If, and it's not it, particularly not it compromising. If it is becoming a recurrent painful problem for you, then remove it.
I have a question actually. What's your view about methotrexate as a preventive for PVR? Sorry, huh? Methotrexate for uh, No, I think uh, there are a couple of papers from AIMS, uh, even antimetabolites and we cite steroid also. Uh, uh, I don't know how toxic it is in the vitreous cavity. Yeah, but uh, that one methotrexate there are obviously and there are another uh, anti-metabolite from our, it does not prevent actually. It does not prevent. And we tried and head and up surgery injecting tricot, those this, that also we tried. It did not make really much difference. Be only way to prevent is do an absolute clean job, get rid of all the membranes, have clean dissection, minimum manipulation, minimum, just bare minimum necessary laser so that you cuts down the inflammation, not leaving blood inside the vitreous cavity, okay. Probably that is the best way to minimize the risk, I will not say prevent, there is nothing like prevent. Actually there is a very interesting uh, thing that they are now talking about, oil is more preferable than the gas, what is your comment? Oil is? Preferable than gas. No, I do not think so, oil has its own setup, it is a notion subjectively, particularly younger generation, new uh, uh, surgeons, psychologically they feel. Yeah. The moment you put the oil, eye is not same. Gas is going to get absorbed. There is no other issue later on. But yes, uh, oil related, some residual always is going to leave it there for its footprint throughout True. life. True, but if you look at some of the, I think in American Academy, there are a few presentations where they are actually now talking about they are doing more in favor of oil rather than the gas. I, I think. No, they talk about traveling, talk about uh, uh, this one. Um, yes, in fact, they say that gas is much higher and it leads to more, uh, no, more uh, retinal displacement compared to oil. So, more PBR so is there that re detachment. So, but between oil and gas, gas will have more. Yes. So, he came back after so <laughs> Swar ho gaya abhi aage bhi, kya karenge? So now... Okay. Oh. So this is a patient where we have done with a GRT actually. So did a vitreous uh, surgery, we... It was all good, retina was attached, removed oil, was okay for a month, came back after one month saying that I have a little distortion of vision. So then we see inside, so that is the edge of retinotomy, the, the, the GRT which we have done laser. So the whole temporal till 6 o'clock was the retinotomy. I was thinking maybe somewhere we have missed laser, so I tried. Uh, depressing, trying to see if there is anything which is connecting anywhere. So I could not find anything there, but so we went ahead to search for the other area. So I said, okay, fine. This is, you can see this small skirt of vitreous which was there in the periphery. So I didn't do a base excision there because if nothing else was there. So go further down. So, I have done laser it will almost till that area. So beyond that, I did not do laser because there is normal retina. So, I do not want to do a laser and a normal retina as minimum as possible. So, I did not find anything there. But then we see this area, there was some vitreous left there and that has created a break. So, and the retina was left only from less than 180 degrees. So, should I have done basic session or 
this is peri silicon oil membrane which is floating so there is a small area which was there so i still don't have an answer whether we should do a base excision with the fakey kai there nasal that's the main reason because i could not reach because of fakey so i did whatever i could go through from the nasal port so so that's the one which has caused a break so how do you manage this especially so this is not the previous old break this is a new break which has happened post sor because after a month then till one month for a period he was okay so after that it is not a pvr there are not membranes there which is pulling it up it's only the small vitreous skirt which was there that is caused it so is there the only solution for this is to do a brace excision i'm not sure whether we should go ahead and do that in or not yeah so there was a small membrane which was there so i just stained and tried removing it because i didn't want to leave any other membrane there say so uh tried an ilm peel there around it so that i'll get the complete membrane there it's, it's very thin uh, immature membrane so i didn't want to leave that and cause a distortion and then again go in for another erm removal later so so once i have removed that then we settle the retina i used a pfcl we don't want to create another break and then uh, drain that so one break is good enough i don't want to have another break create more i don't usually do a drainage retinotomy if i could manage the drain through it i can drain through it so so that's how it is so yeah so what this is the one other option see they they could depress and do laser there not an issue whether should we go ahead and remove that small skirt also or not is the question during first visit right yeah i didn't book yeah the, so probably if it just hypothetically buckle would have been there and it's falling on that yes then you do laser because there is something to taking care of that counter traction but then if buckle would have been there this now would not have happened at all happened at all and so now obviously because of this left or vitreous which is contracting over a period of time and pulling it up and created a break there so definitely unless you relieve the traction it will not settle down settle down means you do large area of laser even if pulls up further and other yes. areas laser that's yes. the way of so now what it. i did was i did laser around in that that the whole area so okay. that yeah. even if there is some traction it's not going to create a break but the now it, it's it's like a i i could have done the laser at the first instant but then i didn't want to do it an extra so now it is like i've done something like a staged laser for them so this side i have already done because of the grt the other side i've done now because there was a break then i've extended it further no, but i think what you were done on first primary surgery i totally agree with you I mean, that's exactly what i would have done primary surgery when everything is nicely attached holding it on only logic for doing 360 degree laser is grt invariably that anterior hyla not uh, pass plana area and horns of the grt if they are pulling and pass plana detaches the fluid shifts through the pass yeah. plana come on other side and then detach this side and that's why you want to have barrage all around yeah what when, I, yeah yeah what i usually do is i'll go do laser even in pass plana in those times yeah, if suppose there the, is an edge yeah. then i'll go hunt and cross the ora and go into the pass plana that's what i do and that's the reason probably not necessary now that's why i would not i would have done exactly the way you did but the only thing is should we put a belt in a grt when we have everything here see again a controversial because see what i do is young patient fake it if you more than 180 degree then practically not much left so that probably may not need to add uh, bell buckle or you affect it guy you need a very good base excision and still it's less than more than 180 degree i won't do but case is just one quadrant joint here fake it guy young boy and obviously you do not want to sacrifice lens naturally you cannot do a uh, good base excision it is no never possible so belt buckle here is not to support the break belt buckle to is to take care of other area where vitreous is contacting i would add that the only reason why i could i did not 
put a belt though it is it's like borderline it's like almost like 180 degrees grt and i could clear most of the vitreous even in the other area so there is only small area which was and uh, sort of left and we never realized that even but i think uh, if if you are doing two vitrectomies in a patient who is faking the lens will definitely get cataract at one mostly so why not do a no no now when i did for rest, this time i did i've done uh, what i'm saying i'm talking about the first instance when i was doing it so at that time i was i was not expecting that so that's why i didn't do a basic session there in that area i usually do a basic session whenever there is uh, wherever there is a break around that i'll just depress and do whatever it is it clear the everything remove the traction whatever cut off like what you have seen there even that break i've cut off the uh, on and then went around did the vitrectomy around that area completely but first time usually in the normal attached retina areas i usually don't do a basic i agree i know but the vision was 69 <laughs> no after a sore after a sore vision was 69 that's the problem <laughs> that's why he came with a complaint of distortion not with the loss of vision yeah. any other questions close down no i thank all the speakers for being part of the program and the audience session thank you everyone looking forward to next year the papers Thanks.